What is the truth? Does God, will God, take pleasure in punishing the wicked? Isaiah calls it God's strange act. And it's very clear, you know, God is always promoting life. He is the source of life. Without God, there is no life. Okay. Destruction is against God's character. He is always promoting, promoting life. How does destruction take place? Let's go to Genesis. God created a perfect world, put everything in it that we needed. There was no sickness, suffering, no heartache, no sorrow or death. God held nothing back in providing for our happiness. Adam and Eve sinned, and they separated themselves from God, who is the source of life. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Each and every one of us have earned death. Them are our wages. Well, I'm glad it don't stop there. So after this it says, for the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. Our wages, what we have earned is death. But God has given us a gift of life. And by Adam and Eve's choice, they have plunged the whole human race into, into rebellion. Sin is actually rebellion against God. Why don't we rebel against sin instead of rebelling against God? You know, it, it would be much better. You know, we should have a rebellion against sin and not against God. Praise God that he chose to do something about our problem. Jesus offered himself for our salvation. Jesus lived the perfect life, and Adam and Eve should have. And we wouldn't be in the shape that we are today. But then we have to look at ourselves. We have not lived the perfect life either, and we should have. Jesus chose to switch places with us. He said, Father, let it all fall on me. Let them have the reward that is mine. Let them live throughout eternity with you and I will take their sin upon me even if it means that I have to be destroyed. Jesus was willing to be destroyed so that we could spend eternity with his father. Because of the sacrifice of God on our behalf the Bible makes this promise. One day Christ will establish a new earth and restore Eden again. One day evil and sin will be eradicated. Peace will come to the human family once again. The Bible story is Eden lost, but Eden will be restored through the saving work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Sin is a fatal inherited disease. Without spiritual intervention, it will take the life of the sinner. When Adam and Eve sinned, they passed that sin down to us. That disease, that malignancy was passed down to us and to the whole human race. <clears throat> sin would destroy planet Earth if it was allowed to continue. But we praise God that Jesus is going to come way before this Earth is destroyed. And Jesus is the antidote for sin. It's only as we stay close to Christ that we can be healed of every disease of sin, every leprosy of sin that is in our life. And God's ultimate goal is not to punish the wrongdoers, but to purify the earth of sin. It's important to remember that if we reject his love and redemption, we will be cut off when he purifies this earth. The Bible does not teach hell lasts millions and trillions of years. Hell is not a hot spot in the center of the earth uh, where people are burning. The Bible teaches sin will be destroyed at the end of the age, just before God makes all things new. And just from a logical standpoint, it just doesn't make sense. A loving God will torment people millions 
and millions of years for sin that may have, they may have committed, let's say if they lived 70, 80, 90 years on this earth, God is going to punish them and burn them for uh, millions and trillions and zillions of years. It just, it just don't come together. It doesn't make sense that God so loved you so much that he died for you. If you don't follow, he'll be so mad that he'll be so mad at you if you don't follow him that he's going to torture you for billions of years. You know. Let's look at what the Bible says now. Matthew 25, 41. Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, we're going to look at the everlasting. But who was the, who was, uh, the fire prepared for? The devil and his angels. That's who the hellfire was prepared for. But because of the choices that human beings make, they're going to participate in that hellfire. The everlasting fire, we're going to get to that. Okay? God wants to redeem us. He's doing everything possible to get us into heaven. There is not one stone left unturned to get us into eternity. But if we pers persist in rebellion, we're never going to make it into the kingdom. When does hell occur? And the Bible is clear on that. The, the disciples asked Jesus about that and about the end of the world, and he gave them the parable about the sower. The sower went out to sow seeds, and he planted good seeds. The enemy come along and planted tares or weeds representing evil or sins or sinners. And listen to what Jesus said would happen to the tares or to the wheat or those who did not respond to the message of Christ. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so will be the end of this age. Hell is not now. There's not anybody in hell burning. Uh, it will come into existence at the end of the age. Hellfire refers to a complete destruction of the wicked, and it happens at the end of time. And how do we know that? The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.9, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserves the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Reserved for punishment until then and when it's at the day of judgment. When a person dies, they sleep, they rest until the resurrection. Remember there are two resurrections. And you'll find that in Revelation 20, 5 and 6, and John 5, 28 and 29. There's a resurrection of life, and there's a resurrection of damnation. The Bible says righteous, the righteous will, re, will receive their reward at the second coming. That's Revelation 20, 22, 12. The wicked receive their reward at the end of a thousand years and not at death. Bible in Matthew 20, or 16, 27, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air, and with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. When Christ comes, the dead in Christ, they rise. The faithful dead rise and they meet Jesus in the air. Um, the enemy is going to counterfeit that also, the coming of Christ. And I'll tell you, the most of the religious world does not know how Jesus is returning. And, um, and they're going to be totally 